sir we give one hour sir like uh, what we do is normally we allow them okay. to go through the clinical part history part okay. then the faculty stop there and ask all the questions related to history then we allow the clinical part to go without stopping till they come to a diagnosis yes. and then we allow them to all the faculty you can go back to the first slide and restart the questioning from that point this okay. takes about half an hour sir and the second half an hour is generally allotted for investigation management and uh, we go up to the complications management also sir and uh, i would request if the candidate is unable to answer to your satisfaction Uh, please okay. give the right answer as a faculty. What you will expect? Answer. That is a problem. Okay. And uh, right. we have three invited faculty for the day. We have uh, Dr. Dana Sir and other faculty. We will also be uh, give their comments. Then uh, we have Dr. Uh, Sailendra Pal Singh Sir, Dr. Gupta Sir, and uh, Dr. Ashok Patel should be joining. Uh, okay. I request all of you to uh, mute themselves, please. Good evening, friends. Um, it is a uh, eight o'clock, and uh, we are uh, going ahead with the session. We have uh, two important exam cases to be presented. Uh, one is by uh, Dr. Rajesh Rajesha. Rajesha is from uh, K M uh, Mumbai. He is going to speak on obstructive jaundice. Uh, he is kindly contributed by Professor Aparna Dash Pandey, and uh, the other one is the malignant ulcer from the tongue, Dr. Jay Lakshmi. Uh, she is from uh, Government Medical College, Sirchurapalli, kindly contributed by Professor Shanti. And we have three eminent faculty: Professor uh, S. P. Singh, he is from the uh, UMS Sci-Fi, Etawa from the uh, Uttar Pradesh, and uh, Professor Amit Sir, he is uh, Professor of Surgery from AIMS Rishikesh. And uh, we are expecting Professor Atri from uh, GMC Chandigarh. I also welcome uh, Kana Sir, uh, Kana Karan Sir, and others who have uh, joined us. And uh, I wish both the candidates good luck. And uh, 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 Dr. Rajesh, would you like to go first? You are in mute mode, ma. Fine, sir. I request non-examiners and uh, others to. Okay, keep in mute mode. If you have any questions, you can type in the chat box. The examiner will be able to take the questions. So examiners and the faculty alone can uh, are allowed to speak. Good luck to you, Rajesha. Uh, over to you, Doctor uh, Jay Lakshmi. You please stand by for him to finish. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, sir. Good luck, Kumar. You can start sharing you. your PPT. Good evening, all. Uh, myself, Dr. Rajesha, junior resident, uh, uh, Department of General Surgery, SGSMC, K M Hospital, Mumbai. Uh, currently uh, working under uh, Dr. Uh, Aparna Deshpande. I would like to present a case on uh, obstructive jaundice today. Uh, a 59-year-old uh, gentleman, resident of Mumbai, uh, metal smith by occupation, belonging to lower uh, upper lower uh, socio-economical class, uh, came to surgical emergency with the. Uh, Complaints of yellowish discoloration of eyes and high colored urine uh, since one month. Can you yes, wait sir. for a moment? We have Professor uh, yes, yes, Ashok Atri sir. sir joining us uh, now. Sir, good evening, sir. Welcome. Uh, we are able to see you, sir, but uh, we find difficult to hear you. We are unable to hear you. Sir, if there is any headset, kindly unplug the headset, sir. Maybe. Give me one moment. Unplug the headset, sir. <laughs> Professor Atri, uh, I will request the candidate to start presenting. Also, I will, if you find difficult, maybe you can log out and log in once, sir, because we are able to see your video. There is some audio connection issue, which is. Uh, 
Yes, sir. I will allow the candidate to continue the presentation, sir. Rajesh, please start your presentation. Rajesh, yes. sorry for yes, the interruption. Uh, uh, F. 15 year old uh, gentleman, resident of Mumbai, metal smith by occupation, belonging to upper lower uh, socio-economical class, came to surgical emergency with the uh, chief complaints of uh, yellowish discoloration of eyes and high colored urine since one month and complaints of pain in the right upper abdomen since uh, one week, uh, one week, complaints of fever for uh, five days and uh, vomiting for uh, last five days. The patient was apparently already one month back uh, when he noticed yellowish discoloration of his uh, eyes and uh, uh, dark colored urine. The onset was insidious and progressively increasing. Initially noticed in the eyes, later the uh, yellowish discoloration of uh, skin over the palms was noted, associated with itching all over the body uh, more during the night. Uh, on inquiring, uh, he also used the history of passing uh, 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 clay colored stools. Uh, he also gives history of uh, pain abdomen since uh, one week uh, in upper uh, right. Upper abdomen, uh, sudden onset, gradually increasing in intensity and continued taking type of pain, uh, which is non-radiating, partially relieved on taking medications. The patient is also having history of uh, fever since last five days, uh, which is of high grade and uh, continuous, associated with chills. He also has a history of vomiting, multiple episodes in the last five days, non-bilious, non-projectile, uh, non-blood tinged, and containing food particles. Uh, Patient gives history of anorexia uh, since one month and uh, there is history of weight loss uh, approximately 12 kgs in the past two months. And uh, he also has history of uh, malice. There is no history of black uh, tarry stool or melina, uh, no history of blood transfusions in the past and uh, there is no history of altered sensorium, uh, no history of uh, decreased urine output. There is no history of breathlessness, no history of cough or back pain. There is no history of lump in abdomen or abdominal distension. The patient is a known case of type 2 diabetes and hypertension diagnosed five years back. He is on medication and compliant. Uh, no history of uh, CVA, ischemic heart disease, asthma or tuberculosis. There is no history of surgical interventions in the past. Uh, no history of similar uh, complaints in the past or in uh, family. The patient uh, consumes mixed diet. Appetite is reduced in the last one month. Uh, bowel and bladder habits are normal. Uh, sleep is disturbed due to itching. And he's a known smoker for the past uh, 40 years, uh, smoking uh, 15 to 20 BDs uh, per day. Uh, patient is a non-alcoholic. Uh, coming to uh, summarize, uh, 20, uh, there is a 59-year-old uh, male uh, who presented with initial painless uh, progressive jaundice associated with itching all over the body and clay-colored stool since uh, past one month uh, associated with the weight loss and anorexia who developed a pain abdomen, pain abdomen associated with fever and vomiting in the last one week. Probable diagnosis uh, uh, could be uh, obstructive jaundice with cholangitis, most likely due to a neoplastic etiology. Uh, coming to general physical examination, uh, the patient uh, was examined in broad daylight uh, with adequate exposure in uh, supine and sitting position. Uh, patient is moderately built and uh, nourished, conscious, cooperative, and well oriented to time, place, and person. Uh, vitals uh, pulse is uh, around 100. Yes, sir. We would like to ask something in the history also, is it? So before you go to the general examination. Yes, sir. Now, can you go to your first slide? Yes. So he noticed the yellow coloration of the eyes and the urine simultaneously? Uh, first, uh, around one month back, he noticed the uh, discoloration of eyes, sir. Uh, in the mirror, uh, and uh, at the same time, around the same time, he noticed the uh, high-colored urine also. Okay. So, if the patient gives only history of yellow collation of the eyes is there, but not the urine, what does that mean? Uh, it could be a acoloric uh, jaundice. Uh, okay. And what are the causes for the acoloric jaundice? Hemolytic uh, anemia, mostly uh, where we find uh, unconjugated uh, hyperbilirubinemia. Okay, and what can the cause for the hemolysis? Uh, could we uh, any uh, hemolytic anemias or? Uh, uh, so can you name few hemolytic anemias? Uh, thalassemia uh, and sickle cell anemia. Hmm? 
and mm-hmm. hereditary spherocytosis uh, mm-hmm. but at this age uh, less likely to present did you ask the history of blood transfusion in this patient yes sir uh, i had asked the uh, history of blood transfusion so can a blood transfusion cause the jaundice yes sir how it will cause the jaundice uh due to uh, any uh, blood reaction uh, like adverse drug uh, adverse uh, blood transfusion related uh, reaction leading to hemolysis uh, can present uh, with the so, uh, so when that will develop like today the blood transfusion is given when he will develop the jaundice because of hemolysis it will take around 2 uh, to 3 days so. yeah within 24 out to 48 hours okay yes sir Okay, today you give it. Tomorrow we will find the patient in the jaundice. Any other reason for the jaundice in a blood transfusion patient? Any uh, infective uh, uh, etiologies like uh, transmission of uh, hepatitis or uh, H- hepatitis B virus or uh, right. so when he B will develop the jaundice after uh, blood transfusion after uh, six months. Usually four to six weeks, you know. Yes, sir. Initial After about four to six weeks, the patient can develop. The... All right. Now, in this patient, the jaundice has come first, and then followed with a pain, fever, vomiting. What does that mean? Uh, sir, initially, a uh, patient uh, has uh, developed a uh, obstructive jaundice, and uh, later uh, it has been complicated uh, due to a uh, uh, cholangitis. Uh, okay. So, what are the features of cholangitis here? uh pain in uh, the uh, right upper quadrant uh, fever and uh, uh, jaundice cause he is asking cause uh, cause uh, anything uh, which causes obstruction in the uh, biliary tree can cause in stasis and okay can you go to the next slide yeah, rajesh one more question can i ask uh, yes, what is the picture in hyperkeratinemia As sir asked you that uh, in a choleric uh, jaundice uh, uh, patient, uh, you can have discolor- notice discoloration in the eyes, but uh, still patient may not give you his to your passage of high colored urine. So is the same picture you will see in hyperkeratinemia also? Uh, I don't know, sir. Uh, yes, you can see same picture in the hyperkeratinemia, right? Yes, sir. Uh, That's one of the differences. Rajesh, uh, yes. out of these two features which you have said, yellow di- discoloration of eyes and urine, which will be actually detected by the patient first? Urine uh, could be uh, initially noticed. Uh, yes, but in this patient, you said uh, it was simultaneously presentation. So, how much time it takes for the sclera to get colored? Sir. Uh... minimum of uh, uh, five so there assumes there assumes to be some uh, you know a lack in the information on the part of the patient or maybe that you have not been able to extract the exact history in this patient but you as as you rightly said it is the yellow discretion of the urine which will be detected by the patient first and then the subsequently maybe the eyes and then the color of stool also uh, a patient may notice that it is a, and you have mentioned that color of stool is uh, you know uh, pale you you mentioned it huh? yes sir on a inquiring he is giving a history of a clay color stool clay color stool you have mentioned yes. that okay yes. so uh, you have kept this possibility of uh, cholangitis because of some malignant pathology yes sir now is pain a feature of uh, a malignancy uh, uh, or a classical feature le- of malignancy less likely sir uh, they can be present in around uh, 30% so why of, did you why did you think on history that this is a, um, a malignant pathology sir initially uh, the jaundice was uh, painless uh, for the since last one week he has developed uh, the pain in abdomen is a new onset sir uh, since last one week he is complaining of uh, pain in the upper quadrant and uh, associated with fever and uh, so did you qualify the type of pain in this patient further did you go into the depth of the characteristic of the pain uh, sir uh, 
pain was uh, suddenly non onset sir which was uh, gradually increasing in the intensity uh, patient uh, which was continuously present and uh, aching type which was not radiating uh, anywhere and uh, the partially relieved the symptoms was partially relieved on taking so medication you have asked whether it was a colicky type of pain or non colicky type of pain uh, yes sir uh, but patient was uh, not giving history of typical colicky so, uh, according to it is a dull aching type of pain yes sir the intensity you have just said sudden onset gradually increasing in intensity meaning thereby whether it was a very intense pain or it was just a dull aching pain uh, sir uh, initially 5 days back it was a uh, dull aching uh, pain sir uh, and uh, uh, post that 5 days he was having fever the pain so, uh, has brought him what the... type of pain you should get in the stone stone disease uh, we might expect a uh, colicky type of pain colicky pain and it has to be uh, intermittent it has to be intense pain intermittent intense pain also intense pain yes. and you have kept feature of cholangitis because of which features in the history uh, patient has a uh, history of uh, fever sir high grade fever with, uh, which was uh, continuous associated with chills and pain, uh, pain jaundice pain and, jaundice and uh, and fever, fever with sir. chills fever with chills yes he had fever with chills and rigors uh, chills sir yes only chills okay chills yes. sir okay sir, what is this called uh, sir charcot stride charcot stride okay okay you can continue further now rajesh i want to know uh, yes sir yes yes dr shilinder if you want to ask Rajesh, what are the common causes of fever in a case of a jaundice patient? Uh, sir, uh, could be uh, both uh, medical causes or uh, like uh, hepatitis could be one of the reason, and uh, it could be uh, cholangitis uh, and. Uh, So why it is not hepatitis? What will be the difference between the you said you said hepatitis? Sorry, sir. Sorry, Doctor Shilendar. He has touched on the point. Okay. Why you think uh, it is not hepatitis? Sir, uh, in case of uh, hepatitis, uh, the patient will develop the f- uh, fever uh, first, and then uh, he'll uh, get jaundice. Uh, is it so? In my case, patient was having jaundice initially, and later he has uh, developed. Uh, fever okay maybe and uh, there are no other prodromal uh, symptoms of uh, hepatitis sir like like uh, patient uh, like initially will have fever uh, malaise uh, like uh, generalized weakness uh, body pain and uh, uh, he might also complain of diarrhea and One very cla- typical feature which happens in this patient, which is more important than what you have mentioned. What about uh, appetite? Loss of appetite will be there, sir. Aversion to food, rather, to be more precise. Yes. So I think, uh, uh, Professor Shlinder, you can continue. Yes, sir. See, the, just uh, the same point I want to stress is the sequence of the onset of symptom is more important in differentiating between the obstructive and the medical jaundice. So the sequence of the symptom which was appearing first is more important than the... Yes, you can continue with Rajesh. Uh, sir, uh, coming to general physical examination, uh... The patient was uh, examined in broad daylight uh, with adequate exposure in supine and sitting position. Uh, patient is a moderately built and nourished, conscious, cooperative, and well oriented to time, place, and person. Uh, vitals uh, uh, pulse was around 100 beats per minute, in, uh, measured in the right radial artery, regular in rhythm, good volume, and character. Uh, blood pressure 130 by 80 millimeter of uh, mercury, measured on right upper limb when uh, supine position. The patient was clinically febrile, uh, respiratory rate of 80. 80- in cycles per minute uh, with the uh, abdominal thoracic uh, breathing and uh, ECOG uh, performance uh, scale one and uh, uh, patient I was having... I would yes. like to interrupt you. Please go back to the slide. 
go back yes sir yeah uh, what is clinically afibrile is there any term uh, in literature called as clinically afibrile so you can write or say that patient was afibrile on touch right and yes, uh, what do you mean by ecog cop uh, sir uh, eastern uh, corporation of oncological group uh, for performance uh, scale sir right. so what when you are writing one here what does that mean the patient uh, is able to uh, do his uh, routine work but uh, not able to do strenuous work sir okay go ahead uh on uh, general physical examination patient was uh, a trick uh, uh, and uh, noted on uh, sclera under surface of the trunk and uh, palms uh, there is no paler cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy or edema there are no signs of uh, liver cell failure uh, wait wait to... yes see actually in presence of such deep jaundice will you be able to comment on paler uh, no sir even if it is there suppose patient's hp is low even if you can can you comment but here uh, you have mentioned that there is no pallor right yes sir so sir, it is a wrong thing right you should not have mentioned yes. pallor about okay move on okay sir uh, coming to systemic examination uh, per abdomen uh, on inspection uh, the abdomen is uh, uh, distended uh, with uh, centrally placed and inverted umbilicus uh, the there is of uh, flank fullness is noted Uh, all quadrant moves equally with the respiration allows discretion of the skin and uh, there are multiple scratch marks uh, seen uh, no scars sinuses dilated veins or visible pulsations or uh, lump orifices and external genitalia appear normal On uh, you said uh, sorry. I'm I'm stopping. Confirmed uh, uh, on abdomen is soft. Uh, tenderness uh, present in a uh, uh, right type of abdomen. Rajesh, Rajesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, go back to the slide. Inspection for yes, abdomen. Sir. Okay. So you in the history you said there were uh, there was a history of itching. Yes, sir. So there were no scratch marks or multiple scratch marks you noted. There were uh, multiple uh, scratch marks. Scratch marks. You have mentioned that. You have mentioned that. Yes, Where actually yes, you find the scratch marks? Uh, over the uh, lower limbs and abdominal. Why? Why? Why these sides? Uh, due to deposition of uh, the bile salts. But they can deposit in other parts of the skin on the back also. Why only on the lower limbs and the anterior part? These are the areas. This is just a simple area. logic behind it. Simple. So you can scratch only on the accessible part of the yes, body. Yes, sir. Accessible parts of accessible body. Accessible part of the body. So you find. So there were multiple scratch marks. You can go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And ah. Uh, on uh, palpation uh, the inspectory findings were confirmed on palpation uh, there was no uh, local rise of temperature uh, abdomen is soft uh, tender as is go soft. back on your inspection yes sir this is you are uh, telling us inspection right yes sir yeah, a good student of medicine before starting this you should tell us that uh, while performing this examination you have performed this examination maintaining the full confidentiality and privacy of the patient In a uh, well ventilated and a well lit room, right? And uh, in which position yes. you are describing these findings, and your position is ex patient is exposed from which point to which point, right? That's very important, right? You should yes. never miss these small things. Move ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, coming to uh, palpation, uh, the inf uh, uh, inspector findings were confirmed on palpation. There is no local rise of uh, temperature. the abdomen is soft or tenderness is present in uh, the right hip uh, right hypochondriac region and epigastric uh, region on deep palpation a uh, pear shaped globular mass is palpable in the right hypochondriac region in the mid clavicular line approximately 4 into 3 cm in size with smooth surface regular borders uh, palpable along the uh, which is palpable along the lower, uh, lower medial and uh, lateral aspect uh, the upper extent cannot be made out as the mass is extending below the costal margin uh, which moves with the 
yeah respiration and uh, non tender and uh, percussion okay uh, okay then... stop stop sir yeah. what yeah, is yes, this sir. mask then sorry sir what is this mask you can you are presuming uh, to be sir it is most likely a uh, gall bladder sir it's a gall bladder there is yes, no sir. mention by you on the liver Uh, the sir, there is no organomegaly uh, palpated, sir. Means there is no, no palpable. There is no palpable liver in this patient. Uh, no, sir. Uh, the liver was not palpable. Do you, do you expect such a finding to happen in an obstructive jaundice patient? And he, he looks to be deeply jaundiced. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the, the, we could uh, sometimes uh, find uh, uh, enlarged liver. Sir. Sometime, not always. So what are the not be sir? So what are the condition in which the liver will be not palpable in a jaundice patient? Yes, that's very if relevant. A, if a patient is already having a cirrhotic liver, uh... yes, cirrhosis. 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 Yes, no most of the time you can palpate the liver how much below the costal margin uh, 2 cm yeah up to 2 cm yes up to in oh, children no, up to 2 normally two also normally yes. also so in a jaundiced patient and that too you are presuming it to be obstructive jaundice patient presuming that it is a obstructive jaundice patient yes, according sir. to you on the history and uh, even the uh, palpable gallbladder is there so it is most likely some obstruction is there so the gall uh, this liver uh, is expected to be a last uh, i think the, you have missed that particular thing it seems like that until okay. the other it is a patient and some other cirrhosis will be there in this patient like uh, uh, prominent veins over the abdomen or something caput medusa or so You have mentioned that there were no other signs of uh, liver failure. Liver failure, yes. Pain, yes. So, yes. So it's a likely finding. Yes. Uh, Atesh, will you call like to call it as a gallbladder mass as you have mentioned in the slide, or you will you like to call it as a large gallbladder or palpable gallbladder? Palpable gallbladder, sir. Yes, because you have very categorical. Is go back. Yes, sir. Yeah, you have written here that globular mass is palpable in right hypocondrium, right? And uh, then you are writing mass is extending below the costal margin, right? So it gives an erroneous impression, right? Because they are two different things, right? And as per your description, it appears that it is basically a palpable gallbladder which you are able to feel, right? and uh, movement of respiration is what type of rest movement up and down side to side what type of movement it is sorry sir what type of movement it is up and down side to side this slump which you uh, have mentioned dr amit is yes, asking the very clear question you have you know the movement of this palatability moves moves on respiration you said yes sir and you must have checked the mobility of the lump also no? one is mobility or respiration otherwise you also check the mobility of any yes. lump so what is the uh, your impression on that uh the uh, uh, like uh the said uh structure was moving with uh, respiration sir uh, and it was not uh, palatable and it was just below the costal margin Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, on percussion, uh, dullness was present along the uh, right fifth intercostal space uh, to the costal margin in the midclavicular line, uh, suggestive of liver dullness. Uh, uh, the dullness was noted over the abdominal uh, uh, lump, uh, which is the gallbladder. Uh, rest of the abdominal abdomen was uh, tympanic in note. Uh, no evidence of uh, free fluid. And on auscultation, uh, the bowel sounds are uh, heard and no uh, brutes. I and, don't uh, think uh, this is the way you do percussion. 
Rajesh, Sorry, what sir? you have missed in the percussion? Go back to the slide. You are you are telling only the upper border upper of border. liver dullness is you have appreciated in the fifth intercostal space. Okay, in medical abdominal line. So you you did uh, not bother to check the lower border of liver dullness. Up to coastal margin, sir. Space. What is the liver span? So what is the liver span? Yeah, From that will, that will sort out the confusion to, which oh, was there. Hmm. Yes, sir. Not uh, in the liver that, span uh, in this patient. Have you measured the liver span? Sir, around uh, 12 centimeter was the uh, measurement, sir. 12 centimeter. It was up to from the fifth, uh, right, uh, fifth intercostal space uh, till the say, coastal margin, sir. Have you done it or not? Because that that will finally settle and you will, uh, and that will also settle whether liver is shrunken or not. Because you said it is non palpable liver on palpation. That will also settle that whether you are dealing with a cirrhotic patient or not. Uh, sir, actually, I had uh, calculated. It is. It was coming around uh, twelve centimeters, sir. Uh, twelve have, centimeters. Um, so twelve centimeters. Is normal or it. abnormal span? Uh, normal, sir. Around. So can you tell what is the normal span in females and what is the normal span in males? Liver span. Sorry, sir. I I am uh, not recollecting exactly. Okay. I think you have missed this particular finding. Had you done it properly, you could have probably seen even the hepatomegaly in this patient. Uh, if the patient is still admitted with you, you can check the patient afterwards, after the presentation. That will improve your uh, clinical acumen. So do every test very yes. religiously. That gives you enough. Uh, Sometimes palpation may not be, you know, that easy to get the lower border of the liver. But span, span definitely can give you whether there is enlargement or not. So how will you check the asymmetric enlargement of the liver? So yes. Whether the left lobe is enlarged or only the right lobe. So how will you check it? Hello. Very good. So how will you assess the, uh, the asymmetric enlargement of the liver? The conditions in which only the left lobe will be enlarged, there will be no enlargement in the uh, the liver span might be normal in the mid clavicular line. So you have to percuss it in the epigastric region also. Epigastric region. Uh, so that okay. only if the left lobe is enlarged, so you have to can get it there. Okay. 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 We are running short of time. I think. Uh, yes. So, auscultation, you said bowel sounds are positive and no brui. Where did you yes. listen for the brui? Why did you listen for the brui in a jaundice patient? Uh, sir. Uh... What was in your mind when you were checking for a brui and where you were checking for the brui? Uh, any intra-abdominal... Uh... This is also a tip. Never invite trouble for yourself by writing unnecessary things. Yes, okay. sir. The examiner will immediately drag you to that particular side for which you will not have any explanation. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So go further. Uh, so per rectal examination was done. Uh, uh, rectum was roomy, uh, normal, uh, normal tone and uh, pale color stool was uh, present. Uh, cardiovascular system S1, S2 audible. What did you and, not uh, mention in this patient? Sorry, sir. What you should have mentioned in this patient in parietal examination in addition to what you have written? Uh, no nodules or any palpable... That's uh, one. Another? The uh, prostate omega yes, was not there. Yes, he's a male patient. No... So, yes, sir. although it may not be connected to his present, but he's a male patient. So, while doing parietal examination, all these findings you, need, you, you can tell. But yes, especially sir. mentioning about the... Any, where actually you feel for the nodules? Uh, sir, in the pouch of uh, Douglas. Pouch of Douglas. Okay. And uh, uh, cardiovascular system S1, S2 uh, heard. Uh, respiratory system normal, vesicular base sounds were present. And uh, 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 central ner uh, nervous system uh, conscious oriented, uh, GCS 15 by 15, and people's bilateral reactive to light. 
coming to provisional diagnosis uh, uh, it is a case of obstructive jaundice with uh, cholangitis uh, probably due to uh, neoplastic etiology most likely uh, uh, malignant etiology <laughs> being carcinoma head of pancreas or uh, periampullary car uh, carcinoma or uh, cholangiocarcinoma uh, without any signs of uh, metastasis ajay actually you have kept here three diagnoses right so what is your provisional diagnosis and what is your differential diagnosis uh sir uh it's a case of uh, obstructive jaundice uh, in cholangitis sir uh, uh, the oh. cause uh, being see cholangitis is not a diagnosis so obstructive jaundice secondary to carcinoma you want to say head of the pancreas uh yes sir uh, carcinoma could be because of uh, uh, head of pancreas or periampullary uh, carcinoma or cholangio carcinoma so why you want to keep carcinoma head of the pancreas here as a first diagnosis uh, the patient is having initially painless uh, progressive jaundice was there sir uh, yes it's a progressively increasing jaundice yes. right there is no waxing and waning pattern there as you no, know yes sir. yes right uh, and any other feature in favor of carcinoma head of the pancreas the new onset of pain could have been uh, so we uh, so what to... can be the reason of pain in carcinoma of the head of the pancreas so sometimes infiltration into the uh, uh, perineurotic uh, like uh, uh, retro uh, pancreatic uh, nerves leads any to... other reason you know and uh, the or leading to pancreatic ductal obstruction uh, any other reason patient might actually develop pancreatitis in due course of yes sir uh, can right? cause pancreatitis yes okay uh, lower down the list you have meant cap periampullary carcinoma and then cholangiocarcinoma do you think this sequence is okay uh, Yes, By the way, uh, did you mention what was the consistency of the globular lump which you we felt in the right hypochondrium? Sorry, sir. What was the consistency of the lump which you felt? Soft. In the... Soft. Okay. Yes. Sir. Was it really soft? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it was soft in consistency. See, a tense, a large palpable gallbladder will not be soft, right? It will be firm. Firm. Right? So, uh, because of the periampullary tumor, or because of the carcinoma head of the pancreas, or distal cholangiocarcinoma, or mid cholangiocarcinoma, it can be a firm gallbladder, right? Not firm soft gallbladder, gallbladder right? Yes. And uh, uh, can you keep a differential diagnosis of gallbladder malignancy into this patient? Is there a dis uh, distinct possibility? Uh, yes, in sir. The uh, symptoms and the sequence of symptoms in your patient. Uh, it can be a uh, Like uh, less likely, sir, but uh, could be uh, gallbladder PA presenting with jaundice uh, could be a later stage, advanced stage. Now, what point goes in history uh, against the diagnosis of gallbladder cancer in your patient? Uh, so uh, your patient had jaundice first and pain later on, right? Yes, sir. So that that is the point which goes against uh, the diagnosis of gallbladder malignancy, right? So usually yes, you have pain first as a first symptom. Later on, jaundice may appear, right? Yes, sir. Right. Any other uh, differential diagnosis coming to your mind here? Uh, any uh, lymph nodal uh, metast metastatic uh, lymph nodal causing uh, compression over the distal. Uh, TBD. See, you have mentioned that patient have vomitings, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, can any distinct possibility of some pyloric mass or some uh, enteral mass uh, is there with lymph metastatic lymph nodes at potipatis? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, could be, but uh, they uh, they will uh, present with more uh, symptoms of uh, early satiety and. Uh, 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 
uh, and uh, could be history of hematemesis. Uh, uh, so there, to, there will be symptoms of you know gastric outlet obstruction first. Gastric outlet obstruction. Yes. Okay, in these patients, uh, that that should be your answer. That in this patient, there was no history like that. He developed yes, uh, vomiting after the appearance of this jaundice. Okay, so that that probably Doctor Amit is trying to extract out of you. So you are. Keeping now three possibilities: carcinoma head of pancreas and periamblary carcinoma. Why you yes. should think out of these two? Which is your first carcinoma head of pancreas or periamblary? Hmm. So uh, usually in uh, periamblary uh, carcinomas, there will be waxing and uh, weaning features, but it could be the first uh, uh, initial so presentation. When when there is a palpable gallbladder and a jaundice patient, painless progressive jaundice, um, what what law you actually interpret here? Uh, Curvature's uh, law. Curvature law. Curvature yes. law. So, uh, should it be there in the periamblary also? Palpable yes, gallbladder. Sir. Palpable gallbladder. Yes, sir. Okay. Why? Between CA head and periamblary, it is more common is CA head or periamblary? Periamblary. Palpable gallbladder is more uh, in uh, periamblary. Yes, sir. I, th I don't think it is more in with the CA head of pancreas. Okay, there is a persistent uh, obstruction there. In yes. periamblary, you yourself said there is a waxing and waning. Why and this waning. happens? Vaccine and Sorry. training, why this happens in the periamblary? Sir, uh, as the tumor uh, grows uh, due to the uh, sloughing off of the tumor. Uh, so, what, what additional history you can get in these patients? Uh, there, there could be uh, like incidental uh, episodes of episodic uh, melina. Melina also. So, if yes, there sir. is a sloughing, there may be episodic melina. Why did you keep cholangiocarcinoma in this patient? Uh, and even if you have kept what uh, cholangiocarcinoma of this side? Uh, cholangiocarcinoma of uh, like uh, distal uh, CBD or midpoint uh, can present. Distal CBD, distal CBD or midpoint, not not Mid the confluence. Yes, sir. Why? Uh, in compliance, uh, the GB might not be palpable. Yes, that's, that should be the answer. So, if GB yes. is palpable, the obstruction is below the insertion of the, the cystic duct into the yes. CBD. Okay, that's it. So, uh, now you, you are keeping carcinoma head of pancreas as a possibility. Yes, sir. Uh, number one. Yes, sir. Can you explain this vomiting with carcinoma head of pancreas in this patient? Uh, could be uh, due to uh, pancreatitis or uh, uh, due to what? Uh, pancreatitis. Carcinoma head of pancreas produces pancreatitis. Uh, I asked a state question. How can you explain yes. vomiting in this patient in with the uh, diagnosis of carcinoma head of pancreas. Sir, uh, in later stages, there might be uh, even compression of the duodenum. Uh, okay. So it may produce a compression of C loop of duodenum. C loop of the duodenum leading to duodenum. Uh, symptoms but of But is there any point suggestive of that in the history? Uh, no, sir. Uh, what type of presentation will be there in that patient then? Along with jaundice. Or what will be the characteristics of the vomiting in these patients? In these uh, patients, post meals immediately. Uh, post meal immediately. Yes, sir. They might have complaints of abdominal distension and. Uh, uh, it, it happens immediately. In what type of conditions patient vomits up immediately? Uh,
Okay, please, rest of the faculty continue, please. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rajesha, uh, yes. how will you confirm your diagnosis? What investigations you will subject your patient to? Sir, uh, initially, I'll uh, want to investigate uh, the patient uh, to give, uh, do the routine uh, blood investigations, sir, uh, C, uh, like CBC and uh, uh, complete uh, LFT. Right. So in uh, liver function test, what will be the things you will be specifically looking for that your uh, patient sir, is having obstructive jaundice? Sir, uh, total bilirubin and uh, the direct bilirubin. Okay. So what happens to the direct bilirubin here? Will it be more will than be indirect or less than indirect? Uh, direct bilirubin will be elevated, sir. Uh, okay. And uh, what, what are the things you will look into LFTs? Uh, SGOTPT uh, will also might be deranged uh, and, okay. uh, and? Uh, alkaline phosphatase uh, okay. and, and EGT. Yes. So uh, apart from obstructive jaundice, in which other conditions do you see a rise in alkaline phosphatase? Any uh, biliary pathology? Apart from biliary tract obstruction. Any uh, 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 like, uh, uh, bone malignancy, so we can find uh, like in rickets or bony tumors, right? Bricket, bony tumors, yes. It happens physiologically in pregnancy, also, right? So, yes, sir. Okay, so Rajesh, uh, in this patient, your first investigation is the LFT? Uh, no, sir, uh, uh, complete hemogram uh, to see the uh, first. I want to uh, uh, treat the cholangitis part. You have to find out, you know, whenever you are thinking in terms of the provisional diagnosis of carcinoma head of the pancreas or periamperary carcinoma, or let me tell carcinoma head of pancreas is much more commoner than the periamperary carcinoma, okay? Yes. It's not the other way around. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what will be your first investigation to make a diagnosis? You know, whenever you are getting a case of malignancy, suspected malignancy, or in fact, in any case which is there, there are three sets of investigations which are there. First are the investigations to reach to a diagnosis. Yes, sir. Second set of investigations for the metastatic workup in the malignancy. And third set of investigations are the investigations for the treatment of that patient, whether it is a surgical or the medical or whatever you want to do. So yes. in this patient, if you want to make a diagnosis, what will be your first investigation? Clinically, Clinically you know the patient has obstructive jaundice. Okay. Yes, sir. So by doing the LFT, you will not get anything extra here, except that you may know that the bilirubin is level is very high. That you also know clinically in this patient. Yes, sir. There's such a deep sclera is there. So it is going to be very high. <coughs> so what investigation you will do first? Initially, uh, an uh, ultrasonography of uh, abdomen and ultrasound. Yes, you must do the ultrasound in this patient. Because ultrasound is going to give you the diagnosis in this patient, finally. Yes, sir. Okay, what you will see in this patient on ultrasound? Uh, in, what you will uh, see in the liver? What you will see in the other parts? Uh, sir, uh, in liver, I will uh, see for any uh, uh, like uh, hepatomegaly and uh, any uh, focal lesions, and I will also see on uh, intrahepatic uh, biliary uh, radical or dilated IHBRD. Uh, we'll see and uh, want to rule out any cholangitic abscesses and. Uh, We'll also see the uh, CBD and uh, size of CBD and level of obstruction and uh, uh, the gallbladder. And uh, we also uh, would uh, like to see on the uh, pancreas. Yes, in the pancreas, what you want to see on ultrasound to make almost a form diagnosis. Sometimes it might be uh, obscured sir, uh, due to uh, the bubble gas. No, no, but if you see something, that can make a diagnosis. A double duct sign. Yes, double duct sign. Eh, na? Dilated yes, pancreatic duct. So yes, if you sir. find a patient who has got a dilated bile duct up to the lower end, plus yes, also sir. there is dilated pancreatic duct is pancreatic. there. That is almost suggestive of that you are dealing with a case of either a periemporary or a carcinoma head of pancreas. Sir, what is the normal diameter of the pancreatic duct? When you get it dilated? 
sir it uh, depends on the head part the body and uh, uh, the, the head, tail the the head part how much it is 4 mm uh, yeah, around 3 mm na? if it is beyond 3, 3 mm is there yeah. you say it is a dilated yeah. one yeah. the formula is 3 to 1 Three in Three the head, one. two in the body, one Three in the, in the, the head. Okay. So, what else you can get in the ultrasound which can change your management okay. or treatment? Again, see for any free flu in the or, uh, ascites is present or not, uh, and uh, any uh, liver metastasis. Uh, so, the patient has ascites, what does that mean? Uh, sir, uh, could be a, a higher stage uh, disease, uh, like uh, it is uh, more likely to be inoperable. So, ascites in a case of this, you will say it is inoperable? Is it only the reason for the ascites in the case of the carcinoma of pancreas? Uh, okay, it can be because of metastasis of the liver. But there are yes. many other causes. You know? The patient may have a hypoalbuminemia may be there. Hypoalbuminemia, yes. Sir. Yeah. There is an increased pressure is there. So, there is secretion of the fluid from yes. the liver. You know? Though the patient may not have the ascites and not have the secondaries. Secondaries, yes. So, ascites may be there. You know? So, ascites doesn't rule out. And then definitely the patient, if he has got the peritoneal metastasis is there. Peritoneal metastasis. That is inoperability. You know? mm. Okay. Right. Okay, after the ultrasound, what you will do? What next? Uh, sir, uh, we can... Uh, just tell, what uh, are the causes of jaundice in a patient with carcinoma gallbladder? And can you get, in this patient, still a diagnosis of CA gallbladder? Uh, less likely, sir. Uh, if it is there, then where is the lesion in the gallbladder? Uh, we are the... Uh, like. Uh, there are the fund uh, like uh, uh, cystic duct or uh, okay at the neck or the Hartman's pulse. neck or the neck or the Hartman's of the yes that can lead to the mucosal of the body so it will there. give a smooth and along with the jaundice so tell the causes of jaundice in a patient with carcinoma gallbladder uh, uh, infiltration into the uh, the common hepatic duct or the CBD okay or uh, uh, any uh, lymph node uh, in the porta causing obstruction to the right. Yes. And, uh, there are six or seven causes for jaundice in a patient with carcinoma gallbladder. First is that there is lymph node at the porta hepatitis. Lymph node at the porta that is the commonest one. Okay. Then there can be infiltration of the bile duct may be there. There may be compression of the bile duct because of the last gallbladder. Then there can be secondaries in the liver may be there. Secondary. If there are diffuse secondaries, yes. one or two secondary will not cause the jaundice. But if the diffuse one is there, it can cause the jaundice. And if there is just one secondary is there, where is the site of the secondary which can cause the jaundice? Just one solitary metastasis yes. is there to the liver. Near the... Uh, uh... Segment 4. Uh, no, no. Segment 4 will not cause the jaundice if there is a solitary one is there. It's the caudate lobe, okay? Caudate lobe, caudate lobe. Okay, if it is the segment 1 is there and there is a solitary segment metastasis, one. it will compress over the, both the ducts and then it can cause the jaundice. And the sixth cause for that is the colidocolithiasis. Can you get the colidocolithiasis in carcinoma gallbladder? Uh, yes, sir. In how many percent of cases you get the colidocolithiasis and in how many uh, percent you get the colilithiasis? Around 10% uh, of the patient with uh, colilithiasis uh, can have a history of colilithiasis, sir. 10% uh, uh, colilithiasis? Uh, no, colilithiasis and colidocolithiasis. In how many cases of CA gallbladder you will get the colilithiasis? And in how many percent of cases you can get the colidocolithiasis? Okay. Majority of the patients the carcinoma gallbladder will have the colilithiasis. Yes. So it's around 60, 70, 80 percent which is there. And in 10 percent cases you can get the colidocolithiasis. That can be the cause of jaundice. Okay. 
Okay. Can can you go to next investigation if you are presuming it to be carcinoma head of pancreas after ultrasound? Uh, sir, uh, would like to get a CECT. CECT scan. Now hurry up. What all you will like to see on CECT? Uh, sir, in arterial uh, face. Rajesh, uh, let me yes, stop. Uh, what type of CT specifically will you order for these patients? Sir, uh, CACT, contrast enhancing CT of uh, abdomen and pelvis with uh, pancreatic protocols. Okay. Uh, but uh, I will also recommend that you should also, as a diagnostic workup, you should also but uh, order or request a CACT thorax, right? Yes, sir. Uh, to rule out metastasis. So what actually you understand by pancreatic protocol CT? Uh, sir, uh, it involves of uh, three phases, sir. Uh, arterial phase, uh, then uh, pancreatic parenchymal phase and uh, venous phase, sir. Uh, Total venous phase. Yes, sir. Okay, so what actually you will see in each phase? So what is the specific benefit you are uh, getting by requesting for a pancreatic protocol CT? This is a contrast enhanced CT scan. Uh, in case of periambulary uh, masses, uh, which are uh, well uh, uh, seen in uh, arterial phase, sir, and uh, in uh, uh, in case of uh, CA head of pancreas, uh, it will be uh, better. Uh, may, uh, enhancement will be better in the pancreatic uh, parenchymal phase. Okay. So, uh, when you will say that on CECT scan, this uh, growth is unresectable, and when you will say what are the criteria for deciding the borderline susceptibility? Sir, uh, when there is a complete encasement of uh, the SMA or uh, the uh, celiac axis, and uh, there is a distance, uh, distant nodal metastasis or uh, uh, multiple liver mates. Uh, Oh, suppose yeah. there is a single liver metastasis, maybe around 2 cm, 5 cm, then is it resectable? Uh, yes, sir. Depending on the location. Okay, uh, so you have you have done now CT scan, you have found out the growth, which is about uh, 3 cm in carcinoma head of, in, uh, head of pancreas. What next you would like to see in this patient? LFT says, um, um, shows bilirubin of 20. Okay, with all the enzymes raised. Anything else you would like to do in this patient? Uh, sir, in uh, CT, you would like to see the local... Uh, lo uh, you have to know that Dr. Gupta has already asked you. You uh, told that you will see for SMB and all. Yes. yes. Any, any other yes. thing you would like to see? So... After this, what workup you will do? Now you will you have decided. Is this a resectable finding? Three centimeter lesion in the head of pancreas, for uh, SMV free, and uh, no ascites, no liver mats. So is it a resectable tumor? Uh, yes, sir. What is the acceptable tumor size in the head of pancreas, which is taken as a you know a, a resectable with good prognosis? With good prognosis. Two cent up to two centimeters. Uh, okay. Two to three centimeters. Two they two say. Three. Good? Good. Okay. So 20 bilirubin now. Okay. 20 bilirubin. Yes, what how will you prepare this patient? Because we are left only with 10 minutes. Uh, five minutes. Sir, uh, if uh, the mass is uh, resectable, we can uh, directly uh, and patient is otherwise fit for the uh, Fit, uh, fit and uh, no comorbidities, then we can... Uh, you are not concerned about sir. the bilirubin level of 20 in this patient? No, sir. Why? Uh, if I have to wait for the uh, like uh, uh, definitive management, uh, then I would like to do a diversion procedure. What uh, happens if you operate a patient with high bilirubin? Uh, but all complications you can anticipate. Uh, patient can uh, postoperatively, if uh, the patient's hydration uh, status is not maintained, can land up in AKI or. Uh, uh, so, what are the three major complications which you can uh, find in such a patient, which ultimately may lead to a lot of morbidity and mortality also? Uh, uh, they might have a higher uh, chances of. Uh, uh, 
anastomotic leak and uh, sepsis sir rajesh do you want to, rajesh what yes, thing do you want to do coagulation profile in this patient or no before yes, going sir, for yes sir i would like uh, to get a coagulation profile done so such a high level of bilirubin what are the other problems? it will be chances of being a coagulation profile will be deranged in this patient so you have to correct it before yes. going for surgery okay what is what is the critical level of bilirubin in this patient below uh, beyond which if you operate the chances of complications are more 10 uh, total will uh, like uh, direct will be no 10 sir. it's not 10 there is no defined but almost mm, it's no. a 15 uh, which we take but how would you bring down the jaundice, jaundice in this patient before surgery what all oh, you can do uh, we can uh, uh, maintain the hydration status and uh, give uh, frusamide or manitol uh, uh, for that will uh, bring down the jaundice any no, other sir, it will, uh, increase the excretion of, and we can do a drainage procedure sir ptbd or uh, ercp the which is which you will do ptbd or ercp uh, 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 if i am uh, uh, posting for surgery then i would prefer to go, uh, do a ptbd sir ptbd you will do nowadays we recommend ptbd uh, no, why sir, we uh, should not be doing ptbd more in uh, chances of uh, uh, increasing uh, introducing professor uh, selender has asked you this question abhi thodi der pehle what will happen what is the major complication of ptbd uh, okay so so um, we actually do ercp and yes, in this yes. question you said there are features of cholangitis also so you yes, have sir. to take care of the obstruction if you operate the patient under these circumstances in which the patient is the way you yes, showed the condition of the patient patient is going to have uh, major complications your surgery may be uh, very perfect but outcome may not be good because of yes. so many other complication which may develop okay so yes. you have bring the last question is there any role of any tumor marker in this patient yes sir uh, uh, we can get ca ca19 bar 9 and uh, ca4964 so what is the role of ca99 in this patient uh, ca19 uh, 19 bar 9 may be uh, elevated sir so at what level you consider that uh, if it is raised you should not do surgery or you should give some new adjuvant uh, therapy more than uh, 100 yes it is more than actually 200 right but uh, yes. if it is more than 100 then chances of it being an advanced uh, disease yes, is more right yes sir yeah sir i think can we wrap this case as the, we are near the finishing line yes sir uh, i think uh, we will allow the candidate to clarify if he has any doubts before yeah. we move on to the next case yeah rajesh uh, you want no to problem. ask some question sorry sir you want to ask some question on this presentation so it was an excellent effort on your part congratulations right Thank although you. there were some uh, uh, avoidable mistakes but i think that happened uh, nonetheless you did a great job congratulations thank you sir so by your history actually it uh, the patient fits into a case of uh, obstructive jaundice secondary to a malignant etiology maybe in the form of carcinoma head of the pancreas right yes. and as the question was raised uh, that is a high uh, uh, deep level of jaundice so you should always uh, optimize your patient pre optimally you should uh, do some biliary drainage procedure prior yes. to you know taking the patient for operative and at the same time as a good post graduate you ought to know very well that what are the various indications and contraindications for surgery and when uh, you should uh, do the surgery what are the criteria for receptibility or what are the criteria for the borderline receptibility is right? and uh, yes, uh, of course uh, you should also know what is the normal value of serum ca99 that is less than 37 unit per yes, ml 37. and whenever it is more than 200 uh, unit per uh, ml that means that probably the disease is metastatic in nature right and then uh, yes. you can also these days you have 
PET CT scan on your hand. So you can also order, request a PET CT scan to rule out distant metastasis, right? Thank okay. you. So we can start with the next case. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajesha. Uh, I also thank uh, Dr. Aparna, ma'am, for uh, permitting you to be here. Stay with us for this case discussion also. Yes, sir. Um, welcome, Dr. Jayalakshmi. Uh, please introduce yourself, your unit chief. I could see Professor Shantani, ma'am, uh, joining us some time back. I'm unsure whether she, madam, is still here. Madam, good evening, madam. Please go ahead, Dr. Jayalakshmi. Uh, good evening to one and all present here. I am Dr. Jay Lakshmi, finally a postgraduate at uh, KAP Gaon Medical College um, under the guidance of Dr. Professor uh, Shantanina. Uh, today I will be presenting a case of uh, a carcinoma uh, tongue. Uh, so, 49 years old male, Mason by occupation, hailing from Trichy, belonging to low socioeconomic class, presented to the OPD with complaints of ulcer over the left side of the tongue for the past one month. History of presenting illness. The patient noticed an ulcer over the left side of the tongue for past one month, which was insidious in onset, initially small in size, progressive in nature and attained the present size. History of difficulty in protrusion of tongue present. History of excessive salivation present. No history of difficulty in mouth opening. No history of pain, discharge, or bleeding from the ulcer. No history of difficulty in chewing or articulation. No history of halitosis. No history of sharp tooth. No history of ear pain. No history of any swelling in the neck. No history of loss of weight or loss of appetite. Uh, past history, the patient uh, is not a known case of uh, type 2 DM, systemic hypertension, asthma, TB, epilepsy, or CAD. No history of any surgeries in the past. History of whitish patch present over the dorsum of the tongue for the past six months. No history of dental procedures or ill-fitting dentures in the past. And no history of sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, personal history, the patient consumed mixed diet. Uh, history of tobacco powder usage for the past five years present. He also gives history of keeping quit in the gingiva buccal sulcus. And the patient is not a smoker. Patient is a chronic alcoholic who consumes about 180 ml of alcohol for approximately three days a week. No history of altered bowel or bladder habits in sleep and appetite is normal. Family history, no history of similar illness in the family members. Uh, so to summarize my history, the patient is a 50-year-old male, Mason by occupation, who came with complaints of uh, ulcer in the left, uh, as, uh, left side of the tongue for the past um, one Past one month, uh, the patient um, has a history. Of, uh, patient has history of difficulty in protrusion of tongue and history of excess salivation. Uh, the patient uh, gives history of tobacco powder usage for the past five years, and uh, he also gives a history of keeping quid in the gingiva buccal sulcus. Uh, so, the, my provisional diagnosis from history would be a probably a case of carcinoma tongue. Uh, on examination, the ECOG score is one. Patient is moderately built and well nourished. No palace cyanosis, clubbing, or pedal edema. Vitals uh, pulse rate 86 per minute. BP is 120 mmHg. Uh, SPO2 98% with room Temperature is normal. Uh, this is uh, the clinical picture. Uh, local examination. After getting consent, patient is examined in a a patient is examined in a well-lit room. Inspection, no facial asymmetry seen. Uh, lips are normal. Mouth opening is adequate. Ankyloglossia is present. Dental hygiene is fair. Tobacco staining of the teeth is present. No dental caries. Uh, the dental formula, there is loss of second and third molar over the left upper outer quadrant. The tongue appears enlarged. There is no deviation of tongue. Whitish patch is present over the dorsum of the tongue, probably candidiasis. Uh, single irregular shaped ulcer with ill-defined margins raised in inverted edges about 2 cross 1 cm present over the left lateral aspect of the tongue. The ulcer is about 5 cm away from the tip of the tongue and uh, 2 cm away from the posterior limit, 2 cm from midline and 1 cm from floor of mouth. Uh, the surface of the ulcer is uneven, edges are inverted, the floor is covered with slough, gingival buccal sulcus, retromolar trigone, vestibule, buccal mucosa and floor of mouth appear normal. The uvula is normal in position. The neck appears normal. 
on palpation an irregular ulcer of about 2 cross 1 cm in the left lateral aspect of tongue hard in consistency edges evaporated floor is covered with slough um, the ulcer is fixed and indurated there is no warm to tenderness present over the ulcer the ulcer does not bleed on touch induration does not extend beyond the margins of the ulcer and the rest of the oral cavity appears normal there is no erythropoeia oral submucous fibrosis swelling over the hard or soft palate uh, on um, palpation of mandible there is no tenderness or thickening the temporal mandibular joint movements are normal on palpation of the neck there is level 1b lymph node of about 1 cross 1 cm which is palpable on left side ovoid in shape non tender mobile and firm in consistency no other neck nodes are palpable Uh, the systemic examination is normal. CVS S one is to present. RS bilateral R and three equal. But abdomen soft. Bowel sounds present. Uh, so to summarize, uh, uh, we have a case of fifty years old male whose mason by occupation uh, presented with uh, complaints of ulcer in the left uh, side of the tongue for the past one month. The patient gives history of difficulty in protrusion of tongue and uh, history of excessive salivation. The patient has history of tobacco usage for the past five years. um on examination an ulcer of about 2 cross 1 cm with irregular margins everted edges which is fixed indurated uh, present over the left lateral aspect of the tongue the induration does not extend beyond the um, ulcer and uh, there is a level 1b lymph node of about 1 cross 1 cm which is palpable on the left side um so the my probable diagnosis would be an irregular ulcer left lateral aspect of tongue probably carcinoma on tongue with metastasis to level 1b lymph node tnm staging is t1 n1 mx yeah uh, please go back to your first slide yes sir yeah next please next slide yes sir so why actually you have uh, interested to ask history of ear pain here uh they may be radiating pain to the ear due to infiltration of lingual nerve which is referred by the auricular temporal nerve sir yes and uh, uh uh why uh, you are taking history of uh, sharp tooth here uh, what is the significance of asking this persistent uh, irritation to the tongue might uh, predispose uh, the, uh, the patient for development of uh, um carcinoma later on so sharp tooth is a risk factor for uh, development of carcinoma tongue right so uh, as you have mentioned in the history that your patient was not smoking a uh, cigarette or bd but yes, he sir. was uh, using some quid right yes sir, yes, sir. so uh, which is more dangerous uh, more risky to uh, you know uh, develop oropharyngeal malignancies quid usage uh, tobacco powder usage sir it is in direct contact with the buccal mucosa and uh, tongue yes it is also called as these days smoke less tobacco right okay sir yes sir okay yeah in the history you have said there is a protrusion of the tongue is difficult yes sir but uh, chewing and articulation is not difficult how will you explain when somebody mm -hmm. is not able to protrude the tongue mm -hmm. that means yes, that the tongue is fixed yes, but sir. how do you say that uh, he will not have any difficulty in chewing and articulation um might be due to um, no no when tongue is not able to protrude out yes, that means you are cannot lift the tongue up yes sir so lifting the tongue is mandatorily required for you to speak yes, well sir. and yes, sir. so either you are not taken it correctly what are the six s associated with the ca oral cavity uh, sharp tooth spices syphilis um sepsis um is there a viva question so you yeah the examiners are very fond of asking this particularly yes sir yes sir okay continue with the sir's right. answer and yes, sir. you said there is a difficulty in protrusion but uh, patient is able to chew that is uh, looks to be a uh, contradiction of things okay you you were asked for a halitosis and no history of halitosis what do you mean by that um it signifies poor uh, dental hygiene 
Um, it's not only a dental hygiene; it's poor oral hygiene, right? I see. I see. The tumor necrosis, no? Uh, the okay. tumor when they all grows and the slough at the floor oh. and uh, the that is the most important contributor. It is the depth of the tissue. Uh, which makes a different microbiome of the oral cavity and how much ever they brush or use, the moment they come to your OPD itself, they sit across mm -hmm. the table, you know that's a typical malignant smell. Where students should take all these things into consideration because that is what, the, uh, where, apart from poor oral hygiene, what is the reason for the poor oral hygiene is because of the advanced malignancy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Not even a oral only, you know, even down you can get it. How will, uh, yes. Is there is any difference between hepaticus and halitosis? Um, uh, fetal hepaticus is a uh, fruity odor and halitosis is bad breath. What gas comes in fetal hepaticus? Is it by breath or by the uh, digestive tract? Micro fetal hepaticus. It, it is by the microbes in the no, it is a feature of a liver cell failure. Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm not sure, sir. No, actually, uh, what happens into the circulation when somebody is having hepatic encephalopathy? Um, See, they're, both are different. One is a mercaptopurin that is happening here, and a halitosis. There, the, normally, the sulfide is metabolized in the liver. When the sulfide not metabolized properly. That is a why try. So you have a smell of ammonia or ammonia-like compound, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, see, actually, as uh, sir has uh, raised a very pertinent issue here, that depth he has asked. Uh, I mean, so you should be very uh, vigilant about it because, as per the AGCC new edition, you know, uh, depth of invasion also has been adding added into the staging of the disease. Yes, of sir. Time, right? yes sir. Go ahead. Um, so uh, you want you want to make a clear cut diagnosis of uh, carcinoma only? Why carcinoma of the tongue only? Can, can, will you like to put some differentials here? Uh, it, it, um, differential diagnosis could be in after ulcer of the tongue. Um, uh, after ulcer, can you show the clinical slide, ma? Uh, is it painful or painless, ma? It, it is a painless ulcer, sir. So with the after ulcer, you will think a painless it, ulcer? No, sir, it will be painful. And you are saying it's a whitish patch? Yes, sir. What are the different whitish patch you can get in the tongue? Um, leukoplakia, uh, chronic hepatoplastic candidiasis. Um, How will you differentiate these two? Uh, leukoplakia cannot be rubbed off even if tried, sir. Hmm. How will you um, differentiate from the geographical tongue and the candidiasis? What is geographical um, tongue? Geographical tongue is uh, uh, hyperpigmentation of the tongue. Um, hyperpigmentation. We are talking about whitish patch, no? Yes, sir. So all that whitish patch, you must be very careful. You must mentioning yes, the word. Yes, sir. Oh, because it is a very, very large, lot of things are there described. Yes, and sir. Many things like in planners. Many things there. So, what you are really seeing that you is it a raised patch or just uh, discoloration? Don't just use the word like whitish patch. Yes, it can be just uh, without an raised thing. So, raised patch yes, is only important. Yes, sir. And what is uh, typical of that also, you must uh, ask. Yes. Okay. Yeah, any other thing uh, you would like to keep as a differential diagnosis? Uh, one you said abscess ulcer, any other thing? Uh, could be tuberculosis ulcer. Mm. Can it be tuberculosis ulcer with this yes, kind of presentation? Um, 
could be tuberculous ulcer sir it is painless uh, indurated but um, but the edges would be under the ulcer in the tongue <laughs> how common or how often you see the tuberculous ulcer uh, in the tongue not very common sir okay you um, go ahead with the findings of your local examination um a single irregular shaped ulcer with uh, ill defined margins raised in abutter edges about 2 cross 1 cm is present over the left lateral aspect of the tongue um the ulcer is about 5 cm away from the tip of the tongue 2 cm from the posterior limit and 2 cm from midline and 1 cm from floor of mouth uh, surface is uneven edges inverted floor is covered with slough see the um, position of the ulcer is very important in any uh, ulcer or ulcer proliferative lesion on the tongue right yes, sir why so this ulcer uh, will you call it uh, as a uh, suppose it is a carcinomatous or carcinoma so it is carcinoma of the tongue or carcinoma base of the tongue what is the basic difference between the two and why they are called as separate entities the management will differ Yeah, actually, the initial five six centimeters of the any ulcer which is presenting over the tongue that is actually considered as part of the tongue, right? But uh, uh, the last two centimeters of any lesion that predominantly fall into the base of the tongue, right? And that yes. is actually considered as part of the oropharynx, Oropharynx. Right? Yes. And uh, the prognosis and the biological behavior of these two uh, sites tumor are very different, right? Yes. So yes. the management yes. also change. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. You you are dealing with an ulcer or ulcer of proliferative lesion. It is an ulcer, sir. So there is no proliferative growth. Ah, uh, no, sir. Okay, you said on the margins there was all inverted margins. Yes, sir. The margins were inverted and irregular. So what is that? That is also part of ulcer. Yes, sir. Prol. No, you must. Yes. It is very important. PG should describe is it ulcerative only or ulcer proliferative? Yes. We are only seeing an ulcer within the margin. Everything is there. You can still call it as an ulcer, but invariably we are talking with a melting with a malignancy where yes. there will be ulcer plus. Second, you are describing a surface for an ulcer. What what surface you are talking about? Surface is uneven. We have put. Um. Surface is a word which you use for a swellings. Oh, yes, sir. But in which description of an ulcer you bring a surface? What do you mean by that? When there is an ulcer, a proliferative growth, uh, it will be irregular. It, it is part of it, ma. Within so we don't call it as a uh, surface for that separately. Okay. Hmm? We are going to talk about an ulcer and the floor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you have said floor is covered with the slough. Yes, sir. But we want to know what is the floor. We are a PG undergraduate. When he says floor is with the covered with the slough, it is fine. Now yes, you must remove the slough and see what is there. What you are expecting yes. there? What you will have in the floor? Uh, the floor might be uh, probably the mus musculature of the tongue, sir. Oh, that will be base, ma. The, where the floor rest is the base. Okay, sir. The floor will have granulation tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you must be able to describe the granulation tissue. What type of granulation tissue it is there? Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. And uh, what is the boundaries of retromolar trigon? Um, the retromolar tri trigon is a, a fold of um, a buccal mucosa that is uh, behind the the third molar. Uh, the base is formed by the third molar, and um, Uh, medial uh, boundary is formed by the um, ra uh, ramus of the mandible, and the lateral uh, boundary is formed by the maxilla. Okay. Again, your next end, the floor of the mouth is normal, but tongue is not able to be protruded. You must be a little more careful on that. Yes. Sir. Normally, only when the when the floor is involved, the tongue will not be able to put forward. Yes, sir. Okay. You mentioned that there is loss of teeth, right? Yes, yes, sir. So was it surgically extracted? No, sir. It was a spontaneous loss of tooth. 
spontaneous loss of peace. Okay. So why this history is important? Um, when there is a, when there's infiltration of carcinoma into the alveolus, there might be spontaneous loss of tooth. Yes. Um, but in our case, since it is restricted only to the tongue, uh, the loss of tooth was only over the upper uh, upper uh, part. Uh, there was no loss of tooth over the lower jaws. Okay, go ahead. Um, on palpation, uh, irregular ulcer of about 2 cross 1 centimeter in the left lateral aspect of the tongue, hard in consistency, aborted edges, uh, floor covered with slough, uh, fixed and indurated, uh, no warmth. How, uh, how will you palpate and how will you check the uh, normalcy of the temporomandibular joint? Bimanual palpation of the mandible has to be done, sir. Okay, so uh, in which position you will do and what specific uh, uh, act you will ask your patient to perform while you are doing this test? Um, um, we have to ask the patient to open the mouth as, um, as much as possible and then uh, we have to feel for uh, both the... Uh, Surface of the mandible, see if there is any thickening or tenderness present. So where will you keep your fingers to look for that? What is the landmark? Uh, the, the first would be um, ang angle of the ang starting from the angle of the mandible, sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, can you explain, ma? Uh, ulcer is hard in consistency. Yes, sir. Which part of the ulcer is hard? Uh, the periphery, the rim of the ulcer is hard in consistency, sir. See, description of an ulcer has to be in a very, very proper way. Yes, and sir. if you say ulcer is hard, and then you are saying base is integrated and fixed. Where the ulcer is fixed? Uh, the ulcer is fixed to the underlying um, tongue musculature. It is not mobile. That... Which is not mobile? No, when you say fixed means what? So when the swelling is in the breast, will you say it is a fixed? Unless if it is not fixed to the underlying structures like pectoralis or the chest. Here is the ulcer is confined to the tongue only. Oh, when you say it is fixed, means what? And another common mistake, what I see is most of the time the ulcers in the tongue will not have an aborted edge. Though it have a proliferated, it will not have like like other squamous skull carcinoma, it will not go at that. And don't go for only a description. You see the case, feel if there is a only aborted margin which you can explain. Use the word, but I, I'm a I'm little sorry to say the entire sentence and the first sentence it is like a routine sentence you are making. Yes. So, uh, like saying the card inconsistency, fix it to the tongue, and uh, there's some mismatch. Please be careful in your uh, finding. I think uh, that's what, what exactly there you say and describe because most of the time examiners come after examining the case. Yes, okay. And no warmth. And where you are seeing the warmth? In analyzer with the gloved finger, you are experiencing a warmth? Better be more careful, no? These are the points okay. you should keep in mind when you are presenting in your final exam. Okay. It is very difficult to comment about a warmth when you are wearing a gloved finger to examine your oral cavity. Yes, sir. Okay. You can simply say it is not painful to examination. That is all. That's all you can say at this point of time. Uh, uh, yep, that is accepted, but not mm. the warmth. Then it is not. Yes, yes. And uh, and uh, induration does not extend beyond the margin of the ulcer. What is that you want to tell by telling that statement? You said the surrounding of the ulcer is hard. Now you are saying it is margin. It is confined to the margin. It is not extending. Um, it, um, 
if induration is extending beyond the margins of the ulcer those areas also have to be taken into um, consideration while management sir uh, that's fine that's good but in your case it was not there yes sir it was not there okay but initially you said the surrounding was hot okay fine Why you all of a sudden you are bringing erythroplakia here? Um, sir, to rule out other pre-malignant lesions of the oral. No, inspection, you are not mentioned anything. Suddenly, on a palpation, you are bringing erythroplakia. So, erythroplakia is a palpatory finding. You can't see in an inspection. We can see on inspection, sir. No, your oh, examination goes in a systematic way. So, you are done yes, an inspection. Sir. Inspection, you are said only there is a white is patch, and you never mentioned about no erythroplakia there. Now. You are not talking anything about that OIT patch now, but you are now started talking about the erythroplakia. Okay, go ahead. Um, level 1B lymph node of about 1 cross 1 centimeter palpable on the left side, ovoid in shape, non tender mobile, firm in consistency, no other neck nodes are palpable. Uh, systemic examination, CVS S1 is to present, RS bilateral RN treatment. Abdomen, soft vowel sounds present. You have to examine the tongue. Kana, go back one slide. Go back one yes. slide. Go back one slide. See, whatever you have mentioned is uh, basically around the movement, mobility, no? mouth opening. Yes, How much is the oral cavity? Is he able to symmetrically open? What happens when the tongue is moved out? Because especially you have been somewhere not very clear about whether fixity or not fixity. Uh, what does it mean if the tongue is not moving in these patients? Uh, there is infiltration. What is the reason the... for not, uh, reduced an uh, gloss, uh, like ankyloglossy of the this patient, in this patient? Infiltration into genioglosses will... Uh, what are the muscles of the tongue? Intrinsic muscles and extrinsic muscles of the tongue, sir. Intrinsic okay. muscles are um, uh, 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 longitudinal, um, transverse, and vertical. Um, and uh, extrinsic uh, muscles would be genioglosses, hyoglosses, palatoglosses, and sinoglosses. What is the nerve supply of the tongue? Um, all the muscles of the tongue are supplied by hypoglossal nerve, except palatoglossus, which is supplied by the cervical branch of spinal accessory nerves. Remember, even the genioclasis is infiltrated, it will not be produced unless it is fixed to the underlying stretches. The mobility will not be, our hypoglossal nerve should be damaged. Yes, sir. Infiltration is not going to affect the protrusion. Yes, sir. It's only the hard or thickened feeling will be there for the patient too. Yes, sir. And uh, Sarah has asked about the base of the uh, tongue and the tongue. But you have not examined mm -hmm. the base of the tongue. Sarah so said it is very distinctly, it is important. Mm -hmm. You must examine the base, no? Yes, sir. Have you examined the base of the tongue? Oh, yes, sir. It was, it was normal. You are not mentioning because you have said in earlier inspection mm -hmm. itself, you have said the fossil pillars you have examined. But palpation? Um, so the in, their, in their oral cavity examination, you have to do uh, articulation difficult, must have muscles of mastication you have to do, closing mm -hmm. the thing with movements of the in their joints. Mm -hmm. So it, it is uh, lately, look, suddenly you have gone to the neck. You have a system or you have a flow. When you do an oral case, it all has to either you have a finding or do not have a finding. You have a system. Yes. You go from T and M in that order. So tell about all the tumor, then go to the node. When you're telling about the tumor, tumor per se and associated to the tumor, what are the potential things which can happen? So yes. keep that flow so that you won't miss out on anything. Many yes. times, this will be short cases. You may not have a time to come back to revisit anything. So it should be in one flow. So it all means examiner says you have not examined. When you are not talking, it means you have not examined. That's a perception. Please avoid this in future. All right. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, uh, how do you want to proceed in the, I, I go ahead to uh, complete the diagnosis. Faculty, please take over, sir. Yeah, actually, I want to ask just one question that, uh, as you have mentioned, the uh, uh, size of the ulcer and uh, distance from the midline and uh, how you have measured it. Uh, are you getting my question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, how you have measured it? It, it was an approximate measurement only, sir. So it was an approximate measurement, which can be wrong actually, right? And uh, then you have to take uh, oncological decisions, right? Yes, so, uh, uh, so what should be the instrument or tool which you should be ideally using to measure the distance and the measure the size? Um, Right, because uh, then mm -hmm. subjective perception may be different. Yes, sir. To you, it may be appear at two into one centimeter, but another person may say it is one into one centimeter. Right. Yes. Sir. So your your T staging might also change. Yes. Sir. Right. Yes. Sir. Some person may say it is three three centimeter. Right. Yes. Sir. So uh, in exam, you should actually speak uh, in a very coherent fashion that uh, uh, what thing you use to measure the size of the ulcer right so yes. you can use a silk thread right yes. and then uh, with the help of that silk thread you can actually you know mark the ulcer and then you can uh, uh, correlate with the length of that silk thread with on a scale and then you can uh, have a rough idea of the exact size of the ulcer right on the lesion yes, sir. Right. and you can also use vernier caliper although vernier caliper in that location may be quite cumbersome for the patient, okay. right? But okay. it, it, if it is an anterior tongue lesion, then probably you could have used the one year calipers, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Is there is, uh, you are interested in knowing the depth of the ulcer? Um, the depth is there is any significant on that? Yes, sir. Uh, it changes the TNM staging. So, the... Is that you have an ulcerative growth? And how yes, do you sir. know the depth of invasion? What is the baseline? Uh, less than, if it is more than no, no, 5 you, mm. So there's a large uh, yes. uh, growth on site and then an ulcer is there. Mm -hmm. And from where to where is the depth of invasion? It is not on the ulcer, sum, I mean, the growth summit. It base, is on the rest of the, the flow. That is correct. Mm -hmm. as a, as from there, you have, to, you have to see that because depth yes, of invasion is going to be an important thing. May not yes, be sir. clinically exactly you will be able to know, but still yes, you sir. can try to uh, uh, understand that how, how much depth it is going on. Yes, so what is your uh, uh, diagnosis, ma'am? Um, Mm, my diagnosis would be pro pro case probably carcinoma tongue with metastasis to level 1B lymph nodes, TNM staging, T1, N1, MX. It's a 1 into 1 centimeter mobile node. Yes, sir. Okay. You think it is a significant? Uh, probably might not be significant, sir. How do you uh, say? So, um, uh, since uh, most of the lymph nodes and uh, um, small, uh, such a small lesion would uh, probably be reactive nodes. Uh, so we can try giving a course of antibiotics for the patient. If we have to confirm, we can take FNAC from the node to confirm, sir. Yeah, how actually you divide the various uh, NAC lymph nodes into various stations? Um, level 1A, 1B. So what uh, is level 1A? Level 1A is submental, sir. Level yes. 1B is submandibular. Yes. Uh, level 2 is upper uh, cervical. Um, uh, 3 is middle cervical. 4 is uh, 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 middle jugular. 4 is lower uh, jugular. 5 is posterior. Um, 6 is central. And 7 is uh, media, uh, media stenal group of infants. Okay, okay. So uh, this is your clinical diagnosis, right? Yes, sir. So before taking any treatment related decisions, uh, will you like to carry some investigations on your patient? Uh, 
Yes, sir. Um, after doing routine blood investigation, I would like to confirm a diagnosis by doing an H-witch biopsy uh, from the ulcer and uh, FNAC from the lymph node, which is palpable. Um, then I would uh, like to uh, proceed with a CT, uh, a, 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 CT, a CCT of the neck um, um, to rule out any metastasis. Um, um, and then to uh, stage the disease, uh, we have to do an MRI, sir. MRI of? MRI of um, the oral cavity. You prefer MRI or CT? Uh, MRI is only done for staging the investigation to look for depth of invasion, sir. Uh, so the investigation to stage the disease would be an MRI, sir. Um, CT is taken... Uh, to look for any uh, bone involvement and more for the node involvement. So, uh, suppose the bone is involved, mandible is involved in outer cortex, not the marrow. Yes, uh, is it not change the stage? I will change the stage to T4A, so, sir. The MRI will be telling you all those details? Uh, no, sir. As, as, uh, CT or contrast CT only will be able to... You will do MRI for what are the purpose? Yes, what is your objective of doing an MRI? Uh, it, it is to look for the depth of invasion and then for uh, um, so seeing the surrounding uh, muscle infiltration, sir. Soft tissue infiltrations. Soft tissue infiltrations. And the nerve infiltrations. Yes, sir. So you, if you are expecting more of a pain, nerve infiltration, and if you are thinking the floor of the mouth is out, you can do. And if there is a marrow of the mandible is involved. But otherwise, because what is the inoperable stage? That is how you go into the T4B. T4B, yes, sir. So whether it is going to the base of the skull, pterygoid plate is involved. So yes, all sir. that will be better visualized by the CT. Yes, sir. So if you are talking in terms of your metastatic staging workup, uh, preferably the first you do MRI, but before surgery, you will also do an uh, oh, sorry, CT and then you can do an MRI. So yes, don't exclude an, oh, both. And yes, yes, sir. For, uh, each component, these investigations are important for that. Yes, sir. So uh, how will you proceed? Um, um, we can do an orthopantomogram. How does it help ma, in uh, this patient? Uh, it, not in this patient. If, if we suspect mandible involvement, uh, we can... No, no, no. It. See, once you have done your MR, yes, going sir. back to... See, yes, uh, if you do not have an MR to understand whether the root of the teeth held or uh, how much mm -hmm. of uh, dental caries or dental sepsis you have, especially when you have a doubt, right? Yes, but if I done an MR, I think there is no point of going back to OPG, right? Yes, sir. Right. But then nowadays they are able to also do a CT orthopantomogram. So yes, you sir. get more better reconstruction. But they are more useful if you are going to do a segmental mandibulectomy or hemimandibulectomy that yes, helps sir. for the preparative processes or either you are going to do a grafting that helps what is going to be the defect gap what is the plan? What thickness of bone graft you need? All those things. Nowadays, mm -hmm. you have titanium-based reconstructs ready-made available also. So mm -hmm. that you can also have an option to do that. So that is where your CT comes in, CT pantomogram comes in. Yes, Otherwise, MRI fatal, uh, you can proceed with the treatment. Uh, Professor Amit, what is your take on it, Professor Amit? Yes, sir. I fully agree with you. That's right. So uh, in present era, actually with CT OPG, you don't require all these, right? Yes, sir. In the, uh, conventional orthopentogram, you doesn't require, right? Yes, sir. And it also helps in taking the management uh, related decisions, as yes, he was very rightly pointed. Yeah, Dr. Atri and Dr. Yes, are there? I'm listening to your discussion. I yes, sir. So, uh, uh, so we, we see less of oral cavity cancer in Chandigarh. So, I okay. Am okay, okay. How you are going to confirm your finding diagnosis? I, I would like to confirm my diagnosis by doing an edge witch biopsy from the ulcer, sir. Um, 
um so what you are going to look in the histology um um the most common um histology uh, type of cancer would be squamous cell cancer in the tongue so we have to look for uh, squamous epithelium with keratin pearls so can you get a, a squamous cell carcinoma without keratin pearl Uh, in undifferentiated or dedifferentiated, uh, there will be less of keratin pearls. Sir. Dedifferentiated. That is a big term, uh, mama. That is another thing. So un- undifferentiated. No. What is the role of uh, HPV infection? Uh, in uh, in uh, carcinoma tongue that uh, um, that um, develops after HPV infection, the prognosis is better um, as compared to. and invariably okay. you will get a non keratinized squamous cell epithelium yes, right. so what are the areas where uh, which organs are prone for keratinization and which are the squamous areas which are non prone or less propensity towards keratinization but still the differentiation all other things matter okay. about see a carcinoma of the esophagus very typical keratinization is not taken into consideration for prognosis right yes, yes, so because they are graded based on the other factors of te like lymphovascular invasion all those parameters are taken as prognostication so squamous carcinoma based on the location has yes, a preponderance of the keratin pearl or not but then it is directly proportional to the amount of viral bodies right keep yes, those into consideration oropharynx no that's more prone for them yes so if do you think this could be a possibility of hpv infection here mm-hmm. is there is any pre malignant condition or predisposing factor you said all the yes sir asked you no is there is um, any uh, there is intake of alcohol is present how alcohol causes uh, oral cancer what is the role of all days what is the role of still correct so each when you say smoking alcohol do yes, some sir. homework write down in your notes and find out and what is exact pathogenesis how it is been created how yes, it is going to cause hmm? yes sir professor amit sir you please take over go ahead with the management doctor yeah uh, so finally how will you like to treat this patient now suppose your diagnosis uh, what you have made clinically that is t1 and 1 mx is right you have done a metastatic workup there is no metastasis elsewhere uh, suppose uh, this nac node is positive for malignancy that is level 1b right yes, and uh, there is a 2 into 1 cm ulcer and uh, you have described there is no induration right yes. although which is uh, which sounds quite contradictory right because some induration is uh, there right especially when there is a long standing history right Yes, so uh, how will you now treat this gentleman um i would like to do a um, partial glossectomy with a modified radical neck dissection um on the same side sir so what actually you understand by partial glossectomy how it is different from wild local excision um what wild local say wild local excision or partial glossectomy wild local excision correct term which is more scientific This is only um, a two into one centimeter. Okay. Again, yes, you know? sir. Yes, sir. So in their tongue, you want to remove? No, okay. sir. Only um, I would like to give a margin of about one centimeter surrounding the ulcer. The so two dimensional or three dimensional? Um, three dim. two dimensional sir <laughs> you are correct it should be three dimensional conservative glossectomy right so patient can have preserve some amount of chewing function some amount of bolus push function some amount of articulation function yes. so okay. when you do a partial glossectomy they get seriously handicapped many yes. times many people will not be able to articulate at all with partial glossectomy and the functional capability of the tongue when you do a partial glossectomy is very questionable so it is preferable you either you conserve 
provided you are able to give a three dimensional margin of 1 cm if yes. you are not able to conserve then you do a proper like named uh, dissections go ahead you have done a limited glossectomy or a conservative glossectomy you have done a modified neck node dissection on the ipsilateral side what do you expect in the post operative histopathology what are the things you look for in the biopsy report um so before you answer that question, question just tell sorry, me sir, please go ahead please go ahead yeah, sir yeah, sorry sir i'm sorry interrupting uh, yes, but actually you understand by modified radical neck dissection a uh, modified radical neck dissection is a removal of uh, um all the structure uh, like a uh, level 1 to level 5 lymph nodes uh, with, um, by, um and preserving um, uh, structures like okay. turn to the mastoid uh, ijv and spinal accessory nerve Uh, based on what is preserved, it is divided into type one, type two, type three. Uh, in type one, only spinal axillary nerve is preserved. Uh, type two, spinal axillary nerve and uh, interjugular vein is preserved. In type three, all the three structures are preserved, sir. So, in this gentleman, will you like to go for a for formal uh, modified radical neck dissection, or you will like to choose a selective neck dissection? Can you choose? Um, supra or mohyot neck dissection can be done. so so then if you can do that why you are choosing mrnd then which will be more scientific um supramohyoid so neck dissection is uh, usually done as a prophylactic neck dissection in uh, n0 neck uh, suspecting micrometastasis okay. sir And since we have a n1 disease um it is um um better to be one step ahead okay good good right answer so dr kangar in this before before deciding what will you do any other uh, do the ct or anything any other uh, endoscopy or would like to do for any is any, any reason for that is yes, to rule out any um, um second primary or uh, synchronous um, lesions in the oral cavity because uh, they, they all have the same disposing factor we can do a bronchoscopy field cancerization yes sir for field cancerization so that is also now important because you are planning for a ct and mri for local it yes, is better you do the all the other investigation also to rule out now you have come to the conclusion and done a which uh, ideally in this case it is a wide or the dissection or the excision is better than yes, going sir. for using the term partial yes sir and when you use the term don't use the term hemi glossectomy yes, because literally it means you have to remove the posterior oh. one third also yes, of so ideally it is not the term to be used yes sir so if the patient is not willing for surgery you have any other option um we can do radiotherapy for the patient since um the lesion is small is a definitive curative or mm, might be a curative treatment sir definitely curative Def <laughs> so you have to plan for a curative dose of uh, uh, radiation therapy with the concentration to the involved ipsilateral lymph gland also usually they oh. go for It's Four centimeters or one plus station. That's how it is planned. So the planning has yes. to be done so that the potential areas of spread also to be taken into consideration if you are planning for it. Sometimes if your differentiation poor 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 rates of differentiation, they also go to the other side of the lymph lymph nodal area. The spread of the radiation is more wider based on the risk factors, right? Yes. but then that is the best possible conservation you can give even a partial excision or a limited excision also gives some amount of handicap to the patient so if the patient is having do you think this patient will qualify for a definitive rt or you don't want to consider uh, rt at all um in a multidisciplinary meeting when they are going to discuss what are the factors you take into consideration for giving a totally conservative therapy or a surgical therapy uh, size of the tumor um, if it is is that favorable is, here yes sir it is 
perfectly yes. favorable yeah. is the nodal status according to your imaging favorable yes uh, yes sir okay do you have any biopsy report uh, have you done a edge bed biopsy um yes sir it was done uh, it came out to be a um, well differentiated uh, squamous cell carcinoma sir apart from that any other information the biopsy report gave you great risk factors not much other no other information was given okay fine if it is a well differentiated tumor do you think this patient qualifies for a definitive rt yes sir so only thing is you should take into the consideration of the complaints that's what is the next mdt question you will be asked for is the patient educated enough is the patient be kept under regular follow up will the patient be understand if the patient comes for a, gets for a recurrence will they immediately report to you will they be able to understand what are the potential signs of recurrences and how are they educated enough to follow up before even they come to them many time what happens is if you have irradiated lymph nodes beyond the field of radiation only the recurrences are initially common mm -hmm. so patient should be able to come to you either according to your follow up schedule or the family should be able to understand because technically when you go beyond certain level how much ever of you lose the window of giving a cure right so these are the things the multidisciplinary meeting will be asking you to address and if you convince the multidisciplinary board yes sir this candidate is going to be able to fit into all the requirements of the mdt then only you consider a definitive rt else but then from the outcome point of view uh, surgery versus radiation is there any change in survival or uh, i would say a disease free recurrence pe period surgery will have a uh, increased the um increase increase chances of disease free recurrence uh, we are uh, doing what other cancer uh, can a uh, uh, extensive radiotherapy we are giving will still promote any other cancer i can predispose to thyroid cancers Papillary so that's the one complication pain. which we talk about even in the disease free there is a, a remote possibility that other cancers also can i mean augment what radiotherapy will prefer brachy or external beam brachy therapy is you see no sir <laughs> you should visit tomorrow to the rt department how they place the wires how they plan a tongue cancer radiation mm -hmm. the radiology post graduate colleagues or the radiology professor will be very glad to show you how they do the planning after your ward work is over go sit with them planning is a totally different process all the students should be aware of because head and neck planning carcinoma rectum planning peripheral tumor planning carcinoma penis planning they have very many devices molds are there insertable needles are there so how they are able to do quantify the now with the linux available there will not be any skin burn because the focus is so very good the collimation is so very good there is no scatter of radiation beyond the proposed zone so you can definitely give a very clear and the delivery of the dose is also adequate and there is no loss of delivery in the track that's the so advantage of targeted it. therapy right so you are giving the targeted radiation right and uh, as sir is asking you should know that uh, what is the total dose of radiation and how many fractions you will uh, you know how many visits you will like to have to your patient in the rt department right so these things are important to know right yes. and in during uh, radiation treatment if patient develops some complications then how will you address that complication right so these are the issues which as a post graduate you have to know and you uh, you should be having the uh, you know basic knowledge of all this right sir any other so question you should know something about everything you can't say that i will not know i will do only words yeah. there you know and suppose, suppose this patient had a uh, data ct and ct source the mantle is involved yes mm -hmm. what option you have now um 
we can do a marginal mandibulectomy if only the inner table is involved sir mm. um if uh, the uh, outer table is also involved we can go for uh, segmental mandibulectomy or uh, hemi mandibulectomy can be done what are the contraindication for doing a marginal mandibulectomy Mm, outer table involvement. Mm. What is reverse marginal mandibulectomy? Uh, so you must read all those term. Okay. Suppose, as you said, in a said, if there's something that is submandibular uh, carcinoma is there gland. So how you are going to do? Okay, multi mandibulectomy is also a part of you to understand uh, certain things. You can go ahead with that. Yes. It, suppose you are you have done a, a partial uh, glassectomy. Is there is any way you can reconstruct also? Um, we can uh, do a radial forearm free flap for reconstruction, sir. Okay. I think in uh, this case, will is there any role of a chemotherapy? Adjuvant chemotherapy? No, sir. No role for... Uh... There is no role for adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, so, <laughs> you should be safe. Sir is asking a trick question. You should yes. be telling, sir, I will review the post-surgical histopathology report. Yes. I will understand mm -hmm. the risk factors. Then only you will have to tell that you either decide or do not decide. Very safe way to tell us. We will represent this case in the multidisciplinary board once we have the post-operative biopsy report. Whether your surgery has been optimal or your surgery is incomplete, many times you may have one or two margins or microscopic margin positivity or all nodes positivity in your modified radical dissection. So many sub factors are there. Mm -hmm. So MDT will again review, then only will take a decision about mm -hmm. something else need to be followed up or they are fine to be told uh, they are declared cured. Can I sir, please take over, sir? Yeah, what is commandos operation? Um, commandos operation is uh, um, excision of the lesion along with uh, mandibulectomy and uh, modified radical neck dissection, like uh, um, radical or modified radical neck dissection on the uh, same side, sir. So, commando is the name of a surgeon. What it is? What is commando? Um, yeah, commando no, stands for the type of the operation you are doing. Yes, sir. Combined mandibulectomy mm -hmm. plus neck dissection operation. Yes, sir. Okay, so C O M M A A N D, which is there, it is not the name of any surgeon or somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. It is the operation which is there. It is combined mandibulectomy plus neck dissection operation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are the indications of doing a commando operation? Um, like in this patient, no. will you like to do a commando operation or not? No, sir. The mandible is not involved. Okay, I mandible think, is not involved. Right. Okay. Now, when you are doing the block dissection of the neck on the left side or the right side, what is the difference? Thoracic duct. Hmm. Yes. On the left side, the thoracic duct uh, is in yes. drains into IVV. Yes. So you have to be very careful about the thoracic duct on the left side. Yes. Okay. So because many a good number so of the how will you identify that ma? If the thoracic duct you are injured or not, and how will you identify in the post-operative period? On the table you can see, but in the post-operative period. What will be the drain you will get? Kyleless. What will be the color? Whitish, milky white in Milk color. Milkish white. 
So if you are in doubt, we are not sure whether it is chyle or something else. What is one biochemical test you can do to identify or differentiate between infection and chyle? Something related to lipids? Triglyceride levels of the... Excellent, excellent, excellent. Triglyceride levels are the one which can give. If not, what else you can give? You are not sure whether it is chyle or not, especially when it, they are not very high volume. So what do you think if it is a total transaction, how much chyle do you expect? It's very difficult to manage because it is not a controlled discharge of the chyle. Right. So many times it leaks from the wound. It, is, it can never be made as a controlled fistula. You end up losing a lot of triglycerides. So patient becomes malnourished unless you definitively do something. So what are the potential things you can do to repair the chyle, uh, thoracic duct? Or I, would, I would say, how do you plan treatment for a chylus leak? Any, 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 from the diet you are giving, position you are keeping. A patient has to be supplemented TPN, sir. No, first of all, to prevent, reduce the flow. So, which diet will increase the chyle mm -hmm. flow? What position you will keep? And foremost thing is, if you are using a suction drain, it will increase or decrease? So if it all is a suction drain, please remove the suction first. Mm -hmm. It should not be a suction drain will because you are going to decide by the volume, 500 ml or the above, high and low. So low can always go for a conservative management. So optimally, uh, if do a scintigraphy to understand, lymphocintigraphy to understand where exactly it's leaking and what's yes. the volume of the leak, right? Many times it is quite difficult to go in, re-enter to locate the duct. So what are the other areas you can clip the thoracic duct? What are the other methodologies? Have you seen one complication like that in your department or in the surgical oncology department? Sure. I don't think she has seen. Okay. So the access can be image-guided intervention or a thoracoscopic clipping. Those are the two methods because local area access may be quite challenging unless you decide to go in within 72 hours or very early re-entry for a high volume leak, right? So many times it is quite difficult and then you need some form of assistance because in under anesthesia, the thoracic duct may not be sending you uh, the chyle for you to locate it. So you have to essentially pre-plan the patient for especially if you're going in for a repair what, what do you do for it if you see a partial tear or a total transaction what do you do that for? what do you generally do it what type of uh, surgery you do anastomosis or oh. do anastomosis. <laughs> very difficult to do anastomosis when, when locally identifying itself will be a difficulty so what what you can do Either you clip or Bye. you push or close the duct. That is all is required. Yes, sir. Kana, sir, I think. Uh, How do you prevent the carotid blowout when you're doing the neck dissection? Um, the, uh, the ligation should be done. Um, A carotid blowout. Okay, one complication I was asking about the thoracic duct leak. Another is the Carotid blowout. So, how can you prevent the carotid blowout? The superior thyroid artery has to be ligated. Uh... Okay, okay, please low, understand, Kana. Okay. Please understand sir's question before answering. See, yes. carotid blowout is a very disastrous complication in the perioperative or postoperative period. How do you avoid? Can something be done as a prophylactic step to avoid or to delay the carotid blowout? Can it be wrapped over something? Sir? Okay, when you are doing the inguinal block dissection. Yes, sir. Okay. 
then there can be femoral blowout may be there. So can you bring any muscle there in that area in front of the femoral vessels to cover that? Similar thing can be done in the neck also. Sternocleidomas. No, sternocleidomas already are removed probably. No? You are doing a neck dissection. So mm -hmm. probably that has gone. Huh? Mm. What do you do in the inguinal block dissection? To cover the femoral vessels. Some long muscle. Bring the sartorius there. Yes, sir. Okay. So similar long muscle is there in the neck. That is the levator scapula is there. Yes, sir. So bring that levator scapula and cover that carotid area, you know. Yes. Okay. But the most important cause for the carotid blowout is the skin flap necrosis. So when you are doing like operations, which are the four flap technique, like the Hayes-Martin technique, which is there, then in those cases, you have to avoid that area of the angulation should not fall over the carotids. Yes, sir. Okay. And then you should be careful when you are doing the dissection of that. It is not that you are going to absolutely remove the adventitia from the carotids. So that has to be intact to prevent the carotids. Okay, so for prevention mm -hmm. of the carotid blowout, dissection, second, prevention of the flap mm -hmm. necrosis, third, infection, and fourth is cover of the carotid vessels by yes. the levator scapula muscle. Yes. Okay. Right. Professor Atri, uh, you wanted to ask that, Professor Hashok Atri, sir? Thank you, sir. Enjoyed your discussion. <laughs> we are going to wind up in few minutes, ah. sir. Stay with us. Okay. Uh, any comments from your side, sir? No, no, sir. It's a good exercise, and that's what that's what all you want to say. Thank you, Doctor Jay Lakshmi. Do you have any questions to get clarified? Any doubts to be clarified? No, sir. Karnagaran, sir, your comments. Thank you very much, sir. Professor Gupta, sir, you can close. Give the closing comments to the student. Advice how she can improve, and then we'll call a close. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Actually, Jayalakshmi, actually, uh, see, whenever you are presenting a case of carcinoma, so you should be very well, uh, uh, you have a, you know, basic idea of uh, all the three modalities uh, which you are using for the treatment of cancer. Mm -hmm. of, of course, the primary ministry of the treatment of uh, carcinoma tongue remains surgery, right? But uh, as you... Uh, in some of the lesions, you know, radiation alone may be the curative uh, thing, right? Especially in the early lesion. Mm -hmm. But uh, 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 you should have a fair degree of idea that uh, when uh, or when not chemo should be given, right? Especially if these are squamous cell carcinoma, mm -hmm. you said well differentiated. So probably the cisplatin based regime may be required in some of the subsets of the patients, right? So, and uh, there were a few, you know, contradictory statements in your presentation, but I think uh, with practice, you can avoid them, right? Overall, it yes. was a good attempt, nice attempt. And as uh, Dr. Kanagavel also mentioned that you should go to the radiotherapy department of your institution. These days, yes, the radiation uh, treatment has gone sea change, right? And uh, they are giving very uh, good uh, uh, boost dose and boost everything they are giving, very targeted therapy, avoiding the injury to the surrounding tissue, right? Yes. And uh, avoiding all sort of uh, uh, side effects or adverse effects like osteonecrosis, etc. and etc. Right? So you should have a fair degree of idea about all this, right? And please read yes. very carefully the AJCC 8th edition for carcinoma tongue, right? There mm -hmm. are many changes which have been done compared to AJCCA 7th edition, right? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all the chairpersons and Dr. Atri, Dr. S.P. Singh, Dr. Kanagavel and uh, uh, regard to Dr. Khanna, sir. Uh, Professor Amit, we have uh, Professor Jailal, sir, joining shortly. He could not come at the begin. Sir uh, is the head of the department and government Kanyakumari Medical College, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Nice Thank to you, sir. nice having you, sir. Uh, it was a nice interaction, sir. All you questions raised were very pertinent from postgraduate's point of view, and uh, they, sh they should know all these things. And uh, I was happy that you, you were able to catch some silly mistakes which you did. So, but but that's the job of a teacher. 
right sir i also take this opportunity to request to you to permit one of your pgs in upcoming classes sir this happens all fridays sir any yeah, any I, of the examinations yes sir i will definitely please send me an email sir, where we need to I send a registered candidate and uh, we will like to present a case of jaundice or whatever you know is asked yes, but sir, jaundice any because examination case you can allow yeah, sir yeah yeah any even sir. Even we will like to participate. I will ask one of my sir, most, most welcome sir. Most so welcome send us, sir. Send us an email, uh, official email sure. of this program. I will revert on that. Okay. Absolutely, right. sir. Absolutely. And in future, sir. also we will love to be associated with this. Program. Sir, this happens all Fridays, sir. Any Friday you are free. Just at eight o'clock, you can join us, sir. Oh, uh, right. Touch wood. We have been running for uh, this is hundred and seventieth class we are running, sir. Yeah, from yeah. the time. Great dedication. So, we appreciate, sir. Aapka. So all these classes are available in the YouTube channel also, sir. We have close to 300 plus cases, 360 cases for uh, students to get benefited. Almost every case has been discussed. CA breast, 10 cases are there. Obstructive jaundice, we have eight cases. So every exam case has been discussed now or uh, before, sir. That's oh, they are a good repository for the exam going candidates, sir. Exactly, sir. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Last Thank week. you very much, sir. Good Last night, sir. Week we crossed 4 lakhs view viewers. <laughs> sir, we have now crossed 4 lakh 10,000. 4 lakh 10,000 now. Yeah. Exams <laughs> are coming now, sir. So, students have now geared up back again. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night, sir. Uh, sir. We must can we thank Dr. Kanagavel for his all efforts for so long here. <laughs> Sir, I only integrate, sir. It is the faculty and the students are getting to benefit. In fact, Professor Amit, uh, Professor Atri, sir, and all, I don't even know them in person. I wrote to them and they were kind enough to accept to be part of us. Yeah. Uh, I think I should thank all of them. Uh, Professor S.P. Singh, uh, I, I, in fact, uh, I met him during your BHU IMS uh, Sajikon, okay. sir. Uh, at that time only we met. And he said yes immediately. So that's how the networking is happening through various national meetings. Sir. Right. Ajay Kenna, sir, welcome to Madurai. Yes, already we have booked the tickets for him. Yes, yes. <laughs> sir, Madurai, for Professor Abhit and Professor Atri, Madurai uh, CME is like very long, many years are happening. I'm sure I have attended. Uh, Jailal sir should have also attended. Like how MAMC course and uh, Banaras course happens. It is okay. happening for yeah. almost three decades now. Oh, okay. that is very pretty. I am associated with MAMC course for very long time now. Yes, so, sir. Uh, I think uh, I've been there. I'll definitely uh, spare time to come to Madurai. Please send the program on the dates. Sure, sir. Yeah. Sure, sir. Most definitely. welcome. Sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. 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 Good night.